Hello everyone, welcome to the Pathology Insights. In this video, I will be discussing about the pathophysiology of the nephrotic syndrome. Now, what exactly is the nephrotic syndrome? It is uh, not a single uh, disease entity, but it represents a group of uh, disorders where we have a derangement in the glomerular capillary walls or the porosite damage. So, we have a damage in this capillary wall or we have a damage to the podocytes which leads to the charge barrier disruption that leads to the increased permeability of the plasma proteins. So lots of the plasma proteins will be lost and this is mainly because of the derangement in the glomerular capillary walls or the podocytes. So all the conditions which cause this will come under the nephrotic syndrome. So we have uh, certain primary causes and secondary causes which cause this derangement of the glomerular capillary wall. Under primary causes, we have membranous nephropathy, minimal change disease, focal segmental glomerulonephritis, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis and other proliferative glomerulonephritis like the IgA nephropathy. And in the systemic uh, causes or the secondary causes, some of the systemic diseases which will be affecting this glomerular uh, capillary walls are the diabetes mellitus and the amyloidosis systemic lupus erythematosus and some of the drugs like the NSAIDs, penicillamine or the heroin and infections, malaria, syphilis, hepatitis B, C and the HIV infections and in certain malignant diseases also in some carcinomas and lymphomas and miscellaneous conditions like the bee sting allergies or hereditary nephritis. All these conditions also cause derangement in the glomerular capillary wall or the podocytes which leads to increased uh, loss of the proteins. Now what are the main uh, manifestations, important manifestations of the nephrotic syndrome? So we have heavy proteinuria, the loss of protein is uh, about more than 3.5 grams per 24 hours and this because of this proteinuria there is hypoalbuminemia and also there is hyperlipidemia and lipiduria all these conditions leading to the generalized edema. Now we'll be seeing the each condition, how, uh, why they occur in the nephrotic syndrome. So normally when we see the glomerular uh, membrane, the filtration membrane, we have the endothelium, the basement membrane and the podocytes. When the blood passes through these capillaries, it filters off so a very minute amount of the proteins. So we have a loss of about 20 to 150 milligrams per day of the albumin is lost through this uh, glomerular filtration membrane. But the proteins which are lost again will be absorbed by the tubular epithelial cells. Similarly, some of the electrolytes are also lost, but they are again absorbed by the uh, tubular epithelial cells. So when uh, the filtered amount of the protein exceeds the amount uh, exceeds the capacity of the tubular epithelial cells for the reabsorption, they cannot reabsorb the proteins. So these proteins, they appear in the urine. So that protein is lost. Normal, so normally also we have a loss of the very minute traces of the protein, but it is again reabsorbed. So we don't have a loss of the protein. Now the, in this again we have two types of the proteinurias, highly selective proteinuria and poorly selective proteinuria. Highly selective proteinuria means here we have only the loss of low molecular weight proteins like we have the albumin and the transferrin. Whereas poorly selective proteinuria means here we have a high molecular weight globulins are also lost along with the low molecular weight protein. So here there is no selection of the proteins but all the proteins are lost, whereas in the highly selective proteinuria, only the low molecular weight proteins are lost. So in the nephrotic syndrome, we have a selective proteinuria where we have only the loss of the albumin. Globulin is not lost. Globulin will be retained in the vessel itself. Only albumin is lost. And the proteinuria is massive. We have a daily loss of 3.5 grams or more of the proteins per 24 hours. Now, along with the increased loss of the albumin, the nephrotic uh, liver is not able to synthesize that much amount of the protein which is lost. So we have inadequate hepatic synthesis of the proteins. 
So combined with this increased loss with inadequate hepatic synthesis of the protein, it causes hypoalbuminemia. So plasma albumin levels in these patients will be less than 2.5 grams per deciliter. Now when there is hypoalbuminemia, obviously there is a decrease in the colloid osmotic pressure. So when there is a decrease in the colloid osmotic pressure, the interstitial, uh, the fluid which is present in the vascular compartment leaks out into the interstitial tissue. So this causes the generalized edema. Now when the fluid leaks out into the interstitial tissue, obviously there is a decrease in the intravascular the, vol uh, the volume in the intravascular compartment. So blood volume reduces. When the blood volume reduces, there is a reflex reaction for this hypovolemia. So there is a compensatory secretion of aldosterone, enhanced adrenaline secretion, then stimulation of the sympathetic system, and also there is a reduction in the secretion of natriuretic factors. So all this reflex reaction for hypovolemia causes more retention of the sodium and the water. Now this further worsens the edema. So it increases the edema. So that's why in these patients they have generalized edema. One is because of decreased colloid osmotic pressure. Another one is because of the reduction in the volume. There is again reflex retention of the sodium and the water which causes more edema. In these patients initially they will have puffiness of the face. Later they develop the generalized edema. Puffiness of the face is again the characteristic feature of the nephrotic syndrome. Now another one condition what we see is hyperlipidemia. Why this hyperlipidemia occurs in the nephrotic syndrome is we will see normally uh, how the fatty acid is utilized in the tissue. So we take up when we take a diet it contains both long chain fatty acids and medium chain fatty acids. So these medium chain fatty acids they combine uh, in the circulation they combine with the albumin and they circulate. Now from this uh, fatty acid and the albumin combination this is taken up by the skeletal muscle heart or the adipose tissue now these tissues they contain lipoprotein lipase which causes the breakdown of this complex and the free fatty acid is released which will be utilized by this tissues for the energy or it will be stored in the adipose tissue now you see the adipose tissue it will be stored as a triglycerides and whenever required from the triglycerides again the free fatty acids are released so these again free fatty acids, they combine with the albumin. Again, they are taken up by the skeletal muscle and the heart whenever it is required. Similarly, the long chain fatty acids, they circulate in the blood as a triglycerides. Now these triglycerides will be converted into free fatty acids by the endothelium bound lipoprotein lipase. Now once these free fatty acids are released from the circulating triglycerides, they are again taken up by the skeletal muscle, heart and adipose tissue for the utilization of the energy or to store it. Now this is how normally it occurs. Now when the patient is having the nephrotic syndrome, he will have albuminuria. So when albuminuria is present, the amount of the albumin, hypoalbuminemia occurs and the albumin in the blood is reduced. So you have increased amount of the free fatty acids when compared to the albumin. So here we have lots of the free fatty acids available to these tissues. So there is the free fatty acid whatever is available is taken up by the skeletal muscle, heart and the adipose tissue. Now once the free fatty acid levels in these tissues increases, there is a mechanism, these tissues, a feedback mechanism is there by which these uh, tissues, they start producing angiopoietin like 4 protein. Now this protein, what it will do is, it will immediately inactivate the lipoprotein lipase. So when this lipoprotein lipase is inactivated, the triglycerides are not converted into free fatty acids so that the free fatty acid is not available for the skeletal muscle, heart or the adipose tissue. This is the normal feedback mechanism, what happens when there is increased free fatty acid level. Now, uh, when there is an inactivation of lipoprotein lipase, free fatty acid is not released, but the triglyceride levels will be increasing because these are not converted into free fatty acids. So we have increased plasma triglyceride level. Now this causes hypertriglyceridemia. This is one of the cause for the hypertriglyceridemia in the nephrotic syndrome. And another mechanism is for 
uh, as a reflex mechanism for the heavy proteinuria also angiopoietin like four protein is released from the skeletal muscle heart and the adipose tissue now uh, this is a reflex mechanism because this angiopoietin like four protein it binds to the proteins present on the uh, glomerular endothelial cells and it reduces proteinuria so when the patient is having heavy proteinuria as a reflex mechanism this uh, angiopoietin like four protein is produced to reduce that proteinuria but this one will also inactivate the lipoprotein lipase causing hypertriglyceridemia so this is the cause for the hypertriglyceridemia in the nephrotic syndrome now these patients also will have hypercholesterolemia now why this occurs is in the nephrotic liver uh, these patients will have degradation of the ldl receptors present on the hepatocytes now this is thought to be because of the para protein convertase enzyme which will degrade this ldl receptors now when these ldl receptors are degraded the there is a decrease in the uptake of the cholesterol rich ldl from the circulation so when the uptake by the hepatocytes is reduced the levels of this cholesterol rich ldl levels are increased in the circulation and when the hepatocytes doesn't uptake this cholesterol rich ldl hepatocytes thinks that there is a deficiency of the cholesterol and there is a stimulation of the cholesterol synthesis in the liver itself again this also adds upon to the hypercholesterolemia and another one of the reason what is thought as there is a urinary loss of plasma proteins like lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase now this one lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase is useful for the conversion of the cholesterol into cholesterol esters so that it can be used up in the lipoproteins so when this is lost the cholesterol cannot be utilized properly and the patient will develop the hypercholesterolemia so because of all these reasons the patient will even have the hypercholesterolemia now along with hypertriglyceridemia there is hypercholesterolemia and both of them causes hyperlipidemia later on the this uh, the lipids are lost even in the urine that is that is a cause for the lipiduria so that's why in these patients we have hyperlipidemia and lipiduria another manifestation in the nephrotic syndrome is hypercoagulation now why the hypercoagulation occurs is as a reflex for the proteinuria liver starts synthesizing the proteins whatever proteins the liver is producing reflex reaction is it starts producing more amount of the proteins so in that we have increased production of prothrombotic factors like fibrinogen factor 5 factor 7 von willebrand's factor and alpha 2 macroglobulins so these are prothrombotic factors which can which causes the thrombosis another important reason is there is a urinary loss of antithrombotic factors for example antithrombin 3 and protein s antithrombin 3 uh, this affects the activity of the heparin so we, when we have a decrease in the antithrombin 3 the heparin is also uh, the activity of heparin is also affected protein s it acts as a cofactor for protein c now this protein c it inactivates the coagulation factors 5 and 7 so when this is uh, reduced the protein uh, the activity of the protein c is also reduced and another one another important factor is increased platelet activity now this is because of increased levels of thromboxane 2 increased fibrinogen increased cholesterol and increased von willebrand's factor so these three they cause activation of the platelets and thromboxane a2 why we have increased levels of thromboxane a2 is this thromboxane a2 is formed from the arachidonic acid now normally the arachidonic acid combines with the albumin and it is not available for the formation of the thromboxin a2 now when the albumin level falls the free arachidonic acid is available which is converted into thromboxin a2 and this causes the platelet activation so in these patients that's why we have increased levels of thromboxin a2 which causes the platelet activation then we have uh, even the decreased fibrinolytic activity this is because of increased urinary loss of the plasmin which is a fibrinolytic protein and we have increased levels of plasminogen activator inhibitor now this is again as a mechanism uh, as a 
uh, reflex mechanism by the liver for the production of the increased protein so it starts producing this one also more plasminogen activator inhibitor one this is an inhibitor of the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin so if ever small amounts of the plasminogen is present it will not be converted into plasmin and this reduces the fibrinolytic activity so now the hypercoagulation is because of increased production of prothrombotic factors decreased antithrombotic factors increased platelet activity and decreased fibrinolytic activity now the diagnostic criteria for the nephrotic syndrome is patient should have heavy proteinuria of more than 3.5 grams of proteins per 24 hours urine collection hypoalbuminemia that is serum albumin should be less than 2.5 grams per deciliter patient should have generalized edema and hyperlipidemia that is total cholesterol level often more than 200 mg per deciliter so all these four criteria should be present to keep the patient in the nephrotic syndrome now this is the summary of the pathophysiology if you see the summary the main cause is derangement in the glomerular capillary walls or the podocyte damage and all the manifestations are mainly because of albuminuria so because of albuminuria we have hypoalbuminemia and because of hypoalbuminemia there is a decreased colloid osmotic pressure which causes edema and decreased colloid osmotic pressure also causes reduction in the volume intravascular compartment so there is a reflex sodium in the water retention which further worsens edema now albuminuria it stimulates the production of angiopoietin like 4 protein by the skeletal muscle heart and the adipose tissue to this is mainly to reduce the proteinuria but it inactivates the lipoprotein lipase now this increases the triglyceride levels and uh, even angiopo uh, angiopoietin like 4 protein is produced because of the increased free fatty acid uptake by these tissues because uh, more amount of free fatty acids are available they are taken up by the tissues and reflex reaction is increased production of angiopoietin like 4 protein so whatever either it's a reflex mechanism or it is a, a mechanism to reduce the proteinuria this protein will inactivate the lipoprotein lipase now this causes increased triglyceride level and along with increased triglyceride level when the, there is a hypercholesterolemia also in these patients because of degradation of the LDL receptors in the nephrotic liver. So hypercholesterolemia and triglycerides increased triglyceride levels it causes hyperlipidemia and lipiduria. So three main manifestations like uh, hypoalbuminemia, edema and hyperlipidemia and lipiduria are because of albuminuria and another important manifestation is because uh, that is hypercoagulability which is because of increased production of the prothrombotic factors urinary loss of antithrombotic factors increased platelet activity and decreased fibrinolytic activity so you have to remember these manifestations albuminuria hypoalbuminemia edema hyperlipidemia and lipiduria and hypercoagulability these are the manifestations of the nephrotic syndrome thank you friends thank you for listening patiently